What's going on, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with another team review. This time, we will be discussing the Fantastic Four. So, when you think about the Fantastic Four, what do you think? You think a bunch of good characters and scumbag Reed Richards. No problem. What we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at their availability, their usability, uh, break points or investments that they're uh, probably going to need, including tier fours, and then finally give them a rating based on all of that, whether they're incredibly available, incredibly usable, etc., etc. But first things first, what we are definitely going to do is take a look at how they work in a blitz. So one second in, while we talk about their availability, get ready to look at this team in a blitz fight. So the Fantastic Four are relatively available in the game. Two of the characters are available from the second you start playing. One is Node Farmable, and the other two are available, but being a legendary, it's kind of hard to target farm one, and raid store characters are very difficult to unlock. So Thing is available in the Blitz store, uh, and he's a 15 shard unlock. Johnny is available in Arena, and he's a 45. Namor is a Raid Store 100 unlock, also not a high priority. Reed is node farmable, but not early enough that you would realistically do your best to unlock him as quickly as possible. And of course, Invisible Woman is a legendary character requiring the Sinister Six team to unlock. Now, if you follow along some of the advice I've been given, Invisible Woman is probably one of the first legendaries that you will unlock. Uh, maybe the second or third in order to uh, kind of progress your game and that's because the strength of invisible woman on her own is so strong but overall this team is incredibly available uh, that said i wouldn't expect the average player to have a completed version of this team until they've already passed level 60 maybe even 65 and they've uh, built out a couple of other teams in their roster so as you can see they just kind of walked over that team Let's take a quick look at the usability of the team now. So, the Fantastic Four, where do you use them? Well, independently, the characters do have some value. Um, Invisible Woman is a phenomenal raid character for just being a good protector. Thing is a phenomenal early game arena character. Human Torch has some viability based on investment and uh, high red star count in late game arena. Mr. Fantastic is kind of the glue that holds the team together, but as an entire team, uh, all five characters, they really only stand out as a war offense team. Specifically offense, as they get none of their special abilities on defense, and a lot of that comes from the strength of Namor himself. Namor is an absolute beast in war, uh, at the cost of being pretty useless everywhere else. So, when you look at the Fantastic Four, they're one of the few teams that independently you can find uses for each of the characters, but together they kind of just come together for one purpose. Now, the Fantastic Four team is strong enough without Namor to also be a war offense or defense team. Uh, the problem is replacing Namor tends to weaken the overall effect of the team, regardless of what you put on the team to place them where you need to. And Namor, while great in war and is capable of carrying some worse characters uh, to a victory on war offense, he gets the most benefit from being around the Fantastic Four. So feel free to like explore and play around with the team to figure out what you think is the absolute best uh, use of them. But for most players' money, the Fantastic Four as a team is relegated exclusively to war offense. Maybe with a healer, you might be able to pull off uh, some cosmic level raids or... No, that's pretty much the only place they can be used. Uh, they can also be used, the, the core of the Fantastic Four without Namor can also be used in any bio-related uh, node, as they're all bio characters, but there are better options for cheaper than that. 
so as far as usability goes, there there's only one, right? You might get a little bit of value, but there's only one, and it's war. That said, as a war offense team, the sky is the limit regarding what they can do. The higher the investment, the key uh, tier fours you have in, there's almost no team, uh, or no meta team, I think is the best way to say it, that the Fantastic Four can't beat. But in order to go into why, we're going to have to go into breakpoints. So let's take a quick look, starting with uh, the worst Fantastic Four member. Not in the game, just in general. Uh, Reed Richards and take a quick look at what he needs, uh, what's worth investing in, and why. So Reed, standard controller, but he's kind of the soul of the team, and it all comes from his passive. Uh, he gains focus and resistance for him and all Fantastic Four with Namor. Anytime a Fantastic Four character takes a turn, 100% chance to apply assist now to self, Namor, or a random Fantastic Four. Basically just doubling the amount of damage, kind of like turning everybody into Ms. Marvel. Uh, if assist now is applied, clear blind on that target. On turn, choose two random enemies. If they have a positive effect, remove one. And of course, if you tier four it, he removes it from three enemies. They get a little bit more focus and resistance, which does help overall since a lot of them do have abilities to uh, debuff Johnny Storm, him, uh, even Namor has triggered abilities on war. So it's incredibly relevant to keep this going. Now, I didn't do it. I haven't needed it, but it is a very meaningful upgrade overall. The passive itself is kind of the glue that holds the team together. Orbital Assault is pure just damage, doesn't do anything else. Uh, the clear defense up from primary target is the reason he has a trillion extra focus. But this attack isn't really killing anybody, it's just kind of setting them up. Uh, and I don't believe that 60% damage is going to contribute, I think it's all about gear for him. Uh, I've seen Reeds do a lot of work. I just don't necessarily think that he's enough of the damage dealer on the team to justify this tier 4. Entangle, uh, always apply stun, is definitely worth an investment. Uh, it helps you control a lot of the matchups that otherwise you would just be punching up uh, or punching down into with your team power. Uh, that guaranteed stun chance, I know it sounds crazy to say stun chance, but resistance still exists. But with his focus, you should be okay. Uh, is big deal and uh, the 400 percent damage that 70 percent increase does make this attack very relevant the problem is you can only use it once uh, and it's only available on turn two so meh not the absolute best use of the uh, ability as far as i'm concerned that said the stun is important if you do need this team to be taking out big heavy hitters and more this is a very important investment as for tensile strength just damage and increasing the chain. It's good damage, but again, he's not the primary damage dealer on the team. Not a high priority. So Reed really doesn't have much as far as tier fours are concerned. And as far as investment, just keep him balanced with the rest of the team. He doesn't need to be stronger or weaker than anybody else. Uh, it doesn't contribute in any way to what the team wants to do. That's what we can talk about thing a little bit. But Good character helps bring the team together, makes them viable in war. Loses a little bit when it comes outside of war uh, to any other game mode. He just he's too slow. His cooldowns don't matter, and clearing the, the buffs aren't that important. Let's so now move to Human Torch. Human Torch is the uh, blaster damage dealer on the team. So as a result, he has one hit point. Nothing you can do about that. Taking a look at his passive on turn, flip one negative effect on self to a positive effect. Yes, it works against Yo Yo. Uh, can never be blinded, can never be heal blocked, uh, bleed stacks just become heals. It's a great passive that guarantees that he's constantly able to hit somebody, but going to tier 4 to flip 2 positive effects, mm, not so much. The damage is probably worth it, because it's 10% extra damage to him and all of the team, that's a 50% total damage boost across the board I still don't think it's that relevant now if you're using him in arena yeah I could see a situation where you know that flipping more debuffs is relevant or no that's pretty much it but I know a lot of people use him in arena early 
I don't recommend it. He's fine, but he's not the answer that a lot of people think based on looking at his kit. He's basically just the damage dealer, so this is a fine investment. But if you're investing in the damage dealer, you probably want this. This uh, ultimate attack, which is ready on turn three, uh, hits everybody for 400% with tier fours, and everyone gets offense down. As you may notice, this attack doesn't happen often because, again, he has no hit points. So it's really hard to protect him, uh, especially from a faster team, because they will uh, obliterate him too quickly. But if you can survive long enough to make this work, this is a ton of damage, and the offense down to an entire team is not nothing. Plenty of characters that give offense down to an entire team are amazing. Invisible Woman, which you'll see. Uh, Ebony Maw. So while it is slow, it, is, it does pack the punch that it takes to charge up so not terrible heating up is pretty much how you're always going to lead off he gains one offense up to a maximum of five apply one offense up blah 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 attack primary target you get it uh tier fouring it just increases the number of offense ups to everyone he gets one more but every other character not just three uh get the offense up so you're basically buying this to give himself an offense up and guarantee the last fantastic four slash namor character gets their ability it increases the damage a little bit it's good attack um i don't think two turns of offense up is incredibly required but it does of course lead into him having offense up for his ult so that's up to you i passed on it you might not i think that as the damage dealer it's relevant but he pretty much is always going to have offense up anyway hot shot damage bleed blah Invest if you want. You're going to use it on turn two almost exclusively. Uh, the bleed can proc from his assist, so if Mr. Fantastic's assist now goes to him, you may want this, but ultimately not necessarily worth it. Uh, unfortunately, he's kind of a little lackluster in his team. I don't think he does enough damage to justify how squishy he is compared to Rocket or other squishy blaster characters. I think that he takes too long to do the things you need him to, and I don't think his team does a great enough job of protecting him early enough that it's relevant. So I, I do say that it's not necessarily worth it to invest incredibly in him. He ends up not being the main reason your team can punch up against Asgardians or Colson Shield or Hydra or whatever team you end up using them against, mainly because... It takes so much to get him there. So he needs a lot of work to be a god-tier damage dealer. And even then, I don't think the investment is worth it, unless you really just want a strong Fantastic Four. Moving next to the Thing. The Thing is where most of your damage is going to come, which is hilarious because he is also the slowest member of the Fantastic Four and one of the slowest characters in the game. To make up for that slowness, he hits like a truck attached to a larger truck that's breaking the speed limit. Uh, it's clobber in time. When attacked, attack that enemy for 125% damage. Gain armor. Fantastic Four gain armor. We know armor is kind of a dump stat in this game right now, so that's not really relevant. But increasing the amount of damage that he does for Tier 4, it can stack up over time if things work out for you. I don't think this Tier 4 is worth it. That extra 25% damage is probably not going to help anybody. Uh, Haymaker. Attack primary target for 490 or 550 damage. It's a big hit. He hits very hard. Uh, it's an execute kind of attack. Like you use it to someone who's yellow and he will say goodbye and send them off into space. Uh, you're ready on turn one. Sometimes you'll use this. You just don't ever want to use it on someone who has a block or a chance to dodge because what a waste of waiting 30 minutes for his turn to come around. Uh, as far as investing in the tier 4, again, he's the damage dealer. You want him to have the most damage, feel free to. Uh, Pummeling Stone, this attack is crazy, right? Uh, and totally worth tier 4-ing if you are trying to use the team to punch up or be meaningful. It's attack primary target for, with tier 4 is 280 damage. Bonus attack two times for uh, 220, I believe, damage. So it's already more damage than the ultimate. And it does lose a little bit to armor, but we said armor doesn't matter. Uh, but it, each independent hit has a chance to crit. 
So it can be a ton more damage. Plus, if he has offense up, etc., 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 this attack, three energy, very quick to recharge. Probably the one you're going to lean off with the most because it does the most damage without worrying about things like block or dodge. If they dodge one, it'll still have a chance to hit. Really, really solid attack on the main damage dealer of the team. Knuckle Sandwich is the basic, just does damage. He does damage. Probably not worth tier boring, but damage. So, uh, things, key component to thing is really important on this, and I don't really go here too often, is keep track of thing's health. Thing is the unofficial tank of the Fantastic Four. Not protector, but tank. So you always want thing's health pool to be among the highest of your entire team, which gets really terrible when you start investing in characters like Namor or Reed, or if you have high red stars on some characters but not on Thing, what ends up happening is they end up having higher health, they end up taking less damage at the beginning of a fight, unlike Thing who has a decent amount of damage reduction. And when Invisible Woman, who we'll talk about in a second, chooses her target to be the tank, she doesn't choose Thing, which is basically a death sentence to whomever she puts it on in most war fights. So you always want that to be as close to Thing as possible, and as a result of that, you want Thing's health to be there. So just be careful with that. Uh, and that's more of a, like I said, invisible woman rule, but we'll get into that in one second. Right now we're gonna talk about Namor. Uh, again, Namor, what Namor does for the Fantastic Four team is kind of sure up their war offense stuff. So Perius Rex, Gain 10% damage, whatever, no big deal. You gain more damage and armor for him, but on war, apply offense up to all Fantastic Four allies. Offense, Fantastic Four allies and self gain 10% damage. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, this is absolutely worthwhile. This uh, is, if you only buy one tier four for the Fantastic Four, or if you only choose to tier four one character on the Fantastic Four, Namor will guarantee their ability to be more successful in war fights, right? Like this is these are all great abilities. So this is absolutely worth it. Does he need it? No, but you know, you want everyone to get offense up the same way you want everyone to get plus one offense up from Johnny. Just kind of works out that way. Uh Giganto, giant, giant sea whale monster. Attack all enemies for uh, up to 300 damage. Uh, on war offense, this attack always crits. Clear three positive effects from each target. Reduce speed bar of all targets by 40%. Uh, if you do tier for it, it clears all positive effects and reduces speed bar by 50%. This attacks this attacks it. Like this is it. This is this is what you use him in war for. Clear positive effects, reduce speed bar, always crit, hits like a truck. Problem is, outside of war, it does none of those things. It just does meh damage. So if any one of these abilities were standard on the attack, always crit, clear effects, reduce speed bar, any one of them, Namor would be a more well-rounded character. Because they're all on war offense, Namor's exclusively relegated to war offense. As a result, he can make anybody win in war for the most part. So, great attack, great investment for war. Outside of war, not so much. And you know me, I like my investments in characters to be worth more than just one thing. Tidal Wave, uh, attack primary target, attack adjacent targets, on block, bonus attack, uh, two times for 80% to the center. So if you choose a target who is likely to block, or a target that does have block chance, he will attack three times, which is why a lot of times you don't want to lead with his ultimate against people that are boosted in war, because this attack just represents significantly more damage than that, if, especially if you can afford to not clear the buffs. If you can just go into a boosted attack, uh, hit them all a total of three times for, well, without tier fours, it's fine. With tier fours, it's slightly more, nothing crazy. Totally worth lead off attacking uh, in war in certain situations. It requires you to know a little bit more about the fight and what you're going to do and how things are going to work, but ultimately a great attack. If you are investing in it, just remember it is a war character. Uh, and it is just a little bit of damage, uh, not great. Namor doesn't have the highest damage stat in the game by any stretch of the imagination, so it's pretty medium damage. He's just doing it more often. Uh, as for Neptune's Trident, damage, done, right? So ultimately, Namor doesn't 
really need much, but if you are trying to sure up that team's victory in war offense, there you go. Finally, we have the legendary character, and the most useful character outside of the team in war offense is Invisible Woman. As you can tell, I'm quite a fan. I do, however, have some regrets, so we're going to talk about those too. Hard Light. I immediately put this on her the second it came up uh, because I thought that Fantastic Four was just so good at war that I wanted them as strong as they could be for all the time. Turns out, uh, the extra fit percent barrier for countered attack actually doesn't matter because she doesn't do damage um, even when you do barrier characters she just doesn't do damage when enemy attacks the fantastic four counters them well that obviously only matters on that team but again it's still only 50 damage and she does 50 percent of one so it's half of the damage gain max health fantastic four name or gain max health again great for war but uh if i could get this back i would uh, in all of the ways I've used her, including war, this has been so irrelevant to me. Uh, I don't think it's a bad investment. I think if you are working on the Fantastic Four team, it'd be great. But as you noticed, I don't have many other Tier 4s in them. I didn't need to. So learning from my mistakes, they didn't need the level of investment that uh, I put into her in order to do the things that they do. Now, they might need a little bit more to punch up 200k, but... I don't bother trying to punch up 200k with this team against meta teams. I use specific counters for that. Now we move into Psionic Shields. This one absolutely is worth tier 4 Applies offense down for two turns to all enemies. Barrier all allies for 40% of this max health. Again, keep in mind, 40% of her max health uh, is a number. So if her health is 100,000, she barriers everybody for 40,000 health. A player can only have a barrier that's 30% of their health. Sorry to do math on this. I'm sorry, guys. But it's important. A player can only have a barrier of 30% of their max health. So if she's 100,000 and she barriers for 40, and someone else is 60,000, they won't get a barrier of 40,000. They can't. They can only get a barrier of 30% of whatever their max health is, which in that case would be 20,000. So uh, a little bit less. 18. Bye. So... That it looks confusing, it's not. Barrier is not an arbitrary number. Barrier is independent to the characters. So uh, that's not the real value of this attack. Uh, the value is that when you tier four it, offense down for two turns to all enemies is incredibly huge uh, and can be used at the right time in not only war, but in raids when you use her or in arena to make sure that the opponents aren't doing the damage with the attacks that they need to be doing them with. Great ability. Bending Light, also absolutely phenomenal tier 4 investment. Clear two negative effects from self and all allies. Apply stealth to self and all allies. Apply defense up to self and all allies. Just on that, it would be great. Clear stealth from the highest health ally. This is where we talk about thing from before. Apply three deflect and immunity for two turns to the highest health ally. This is where we were talking about from war. If thing has the highest health uh, and its current health, not total health, uh, then this apply three deflects and immunity will be absolutely amazing on him because it will make sure that he uh, can tank and he will counter. And of course, when he counters, other Fantastic Four members will counter because of her passive, etc., 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 etc. It just sets it up perfectly. If it goes on anyone else, uh, sure, they'll have deflex and immunity, but they'll be the only one people can attack. And in raids or in Dark Dimension, when you're uh, sending that many opposing characters, not just the four or five that are, your opponent has, but like a row of nine people just constantly punching one character, it's going to do some damage over the long run. So this is an investment absolutely worth it. Apply stealth to self and all allies required to keep this uh, doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, and I think this is one of the only required tier fours on this entire team. Uh, Psionic Shields is a great investment. Bending Light's kind of required. Cosmic Rays, no. Cool. All right, we're done. Uh, and now that we've talked about tier fours, I just wanted to go real quick over breakpoints. So, as we discussed with what the investment's trying to do, I don't really like a Fantastic Four team under about 150k or roughly 30k each. In addition, you lose a little bit of value if you kind of imbalance them. Like if you work really hard on one of the characters. Then Invisible Woman's special becomes less useful 
because it'll target that character instead of maybe Thing or even herself, etc., 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 etc. Because this team requires very specific rules and it seems a little bit of poor design when it comes to how it selects the the way they work, I, I, I gotta say that this is one of those teams that you're not going to really feel how strong they are until they're all about 40 to 50k. Uh, and the reason I say 40 to 50k is because that usually assumes that you've not only put a decent chunk of gear into them, but you've also tier forward some key abilities. Uh, you might have a decent number of red stars. You are using the team at a level that will help them work and up towards their task, which is, of course, war offense victories. 200 to 250k is my, this team should be able to start punching up one, especially if you key in on the right tier fours. That said, a lot of players are going to have a hard time working on the entire Fantastic Four team when they can just work on Invisible Woman and use her for raids, um, for Arena, for Dark Dimension. So, as you see, my Invisible Woman was brought to gear tier 14. Uh, Namor and Thing were just kind of invested in roughly the same speed. Human Torch got where he got from just patience, I guess. Uh, and Reed I left in the dumpster where he belongs. And yeah, I would love to spend more time working on them, but when it comes to bio characters, I could just do so much better. You know, there's so many more. So in order to kind of balance that out i think that the fantastic four team is kind of a get them to 200 to 250k team leave them there that's my advice uh, i don't think you're going to regret more investment in them however they will only be able to fight harder teams in the war so that's it if that's worth it for you then that's totally okay i don't see the value in having a team that can fight harder teams in war at the cost of what their investment is but that's me so that's pretty much it when it comes to ratings i hate doing it i really do this team is fun this team is really good at war but as a team because we're rating the team not independent characters i can't in good conscience give this team anything higher than a b rating i can't do it doesn't matter that one or two of the characters are useful doesn't matter that invisible woman's one of the best protectors in the game as a team, B, they're literally only good in half of one game mode. We don't count Blitz because technically every team is good in Blitz. So what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to use them, I guess you can use them in the cosmic lane, but they're not better than the Guardians, you know? Like, and the investment you need only helps you in that one line. Uh, they don't unlock anybody. They don't really hedge anything major for you. I think that as a team, you can only talk about them as a team, as the five of them, they're a B rating. They have one value and that's it. But that's my opinion. You guys comment below. Let me know what you guys think. Tell me how you feel about the Fantastic Four as a team. Or more importantly, tell me how you feel about them split up. Because if they are better split up than as a team, we have a real Wakandan situation on our hands. Um, other than that, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.